What is up you guys? Brooke here and today is round 13 of the Strike Back Videothon and today's topic is quick, bleh, quick reads, not quick. I'm recommending you all really quick reads that you can read really quickly. <laughs> so the first book I'm going over with you all today is called I Was Here and this was written by Gail Foreman. Let me go ahead and tell you how long the book is. I knew it wasn't very long. I remembered I was like that was a quick read and yes it was a quick read because it's 270 pages and you can't see it. So this is a lot more serious of a contemporary read than other contemporary reads I like to go ahead and pick up because this is about suicide. This is about a girl whose best friend had killed herself and so she kind of goes on this self-discovery journey of learning about why her friend had done this and the author Gail Foreman she has a blurb at the very back about suicide and learn uh, certain little facts about suicide in itself and it was just very it was just subject matter I don't really uh, go ahead and put myself into reading and I was actually really happy that I read this because it was very well done in my opinion very quick read if you're just looking for more of a serious drama type read that um, will kind of make you cry because <laughs> it made me cry um, then this is a re this is a really good book to pick up it's it's a lot more serious I won't read it again I already know I won't read it again but it was still a very good book that I was happy to have read this is a serious contemporary read that I really really enjoyed and I have talked about already in a couple different uh, strike backathon videos and this was we were liars by E.L. Lockhart or just E. Lockhart oops <laughs> let me see how many pages there are oh my gosh this is really short let me see hold on hold on 225 pages this is a really freaking short read for most YA books out there this is just about a book of I don't want to tell you what it's about though it would give things away and I don't want to give things away because I'm not that type of spoilery person. All I'm going to say about this book is that it's about a group of uh, cousins who get together every summer on their family's island, on their family's private island. I'm pretty sure it's private. But yeah, they get together and they do things. That's all I'm going to say. But it's really, really good. You should pick it up. E. Lockhart's writing is gorgeous. Just within the first, first page, the writing is really pretty. Look, there's, there's a map of the island, which is really pretty. If you like maps, this one has a really cool map that you can go back and look upon. Really like this book. I don't know if I'll ever read this again. I kind of want to, though, to see things from another perspective after reading it the first time. That would be interesting, I will say. Okay, the other two books I wanted to point out that are really quick reads I do not have on me right now. Um, I think I had read those on ebook. I'll be sure to go ahead and say how many pages each of those books have because I know I want to prove to you that's a short read. Next book I want to point out is Looking for Alaska by John Green. This was my first John Green book I had ever read and I really enjoyed it. Once again, another serious book. All of these books are pretty much really serious reads but they're really short so at least the drama and the making you feel bad for everybody is really quick <laughs> this book is 221 pages long that is so short to me this book kind of takes place in this kind of boarding school type environment and it's about this boy who just really falls hard for this girl named Alaska and I remember it about this book that the boy really had a thing for knowing about the last words that people had said before they died. But I found that really interesting. It was a different kind of quirk that a character can have in a book that I really liked. I always used to picture the main character of Looking for Alaska as Freddie Highmore, who plays uh, Norman Bates from Bates Motel. I just always thought that that would be the type of character that was described in the book Looking for Alaska. And finally, a happy book that I'm going to be talking about. Yay, a happy book. I've missed those. And that book is going to be The Summer I Turned Pretty by Ginny Han. Oh, The Summer I Turned Pretty. What a just darling book. Oh my gosh. And this was the second book I had read uh, by Ginny Han. Her writing is like sprinkles on top of a beautifully icing cake. It's just always so cute and dainty and pretty. I haven't read the rest of the series, but I kind of want to this summer. We'll see how that happens. But this is a wonderful summer read. It's about a girl whose family goes uh, to their family house on their beach. And I don't remember what beach this is. But they have friends who are another family that live close by and of course that family has two very attractive boys who are about her age. They're older than her but they're close in age to where it makes everything oh so fun. Her and her brother and those two boys from that other family were all childhood best friends growing up every summer whenever they went to their houses in the beach and so it's just as cute 
and wonderful and pleasant and I love it. Ginny Han. I love Ginny Han. Get me more Ginny Han. And that book is actually 276 pages. So that's a pretty small book still. Every All the books I have here are well under 300 words. Words. Pages. That would make for a very quick book if it was under 300 words. <laughs> All right, so that was round nine. No, hold on. Wow, that was round 13 <laughs> of the Strike Back Videothon. Excuse me, guys. I just edited, I think, round nine that of my video that I had just posted, so I think the number nine is still in my head. But yeah, that was round 13 of the Strike Back Videothon. I hope you guys liked it, and I hope you'll check out my video I am posting tomorrow. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will check you all next time. Bye!